You know, when it comes to ancient mysteries and all these big rocks we love to talk about so much, there has been hundreds and hundreds of explanations brought to bear over the years. And one of them gets disregarded way faster than it should, in my opinion, by the mainstream, and that would be geopolymers. They kick that thing right out like it's space lasers or aliens or something. And we know the Romans had concrete, right? Better than ours. I mean, we're still looking at a lot of it 2,000 years later. We also have a lot of rocks that we're looking at that seem like they were poured. We have a lot of stones in the ancient record that look like they were worked wet as opposed to hard. So why is there such a opposition to this? It's a low tech solution, man. Why, why does the academics oppose this so heavily? Well, one of it would be guys like Graham Hancock or myself or Jimmy Corsetti or Ben Van Kirkwick or whoever brings this stuff up and they already don't like us and they're gonna oppose anything we said, right? That's part of it. But another part of it is there's people that that do take it way too far. They, they think that Ben's vases were poured it with, from geopolymers. They think the pyramid was made from geopolymers. The Barbara Caves, geopolymers. And the problem it isn't just that they take it too far that direction. They end up just absolutely misrepresenting science in general. And I'm going to cover one of these guys today. His name is Marcel Foti. He's big into the natron theory, which... To be very clear again, I'm into geopolymers and have no problem with the ideas surrounding them. My problem comes when data is lied about, when things are not represented properly. So let's talk about some science for a minute. Hi, my name's Dan and welcome to Dunking. Now, right off the bat, I want to clarify that geopolymers are specifically like high in aluminum and silica and other stuff. And hypothetically, there's other ways to make concretes and other you know, artificial rocks. So when I say geopolymer here, I'm, I'm using it very loosely, basically meaning man-made stones. All right. Now, having said that, let's watch what Marcel had to say a little over a year ago when he was on Limitless with my boy Matt Bell. There is a precipitation order for salts, as I learned later on. If there is a salty lake and there is evaporation, then what's on the top is almost always, almost always natron. 99.99999% that it's natron. Marcel's statement there is kind of sort of accurate. Um, Basically, salt precipitation is when uh, water or another solution evaporates and it leaves behind some salt. Uh, that's generally the basic way of looking at it. And yes, it will leave them behind in different orders, basically on how soluble the salt is, how easy that type of salt dissolves when you stir it into water. That's going to determine how fast it evaporates out. And it is true that if the only two salts in your solution are natron and table salt, that yes, the natron will be the first one to come out. So everything he said there was right, except for this 99.99999. He, he's not taking in other salts to account or other, other factors into account at all. But generally speaking, what he said there was true. If you look at a satellite map and you some, see something white around the lake, it's, all, it's, it's almost always natron because mm -hmm. natron is the first to precipitate. There is this, this precipitation order I told you, and and uh, table salt, the salt we use for cooking, is at the bottom of the list. It will not leave the water easily. So it gives us a factual statement. So we all get into the car, ready to follow him wherever he's going to take us, and then he drives us right into the insane asylum. Okay, look, natron doesn't form with table salt out of necessity. The two do not have some magic ratio. Sometimes they form together. Sometimes they form on their own. And you can see this. In Tunisia, there is a natron lake. And the salt flats in uh, Salt Lake, Utah, in Utah, Bonneville Flats, I believe it's called, that is, there's no natron there at all. None. No natron. It, but you can see it from space. Big old white speck. The fact of the matter is it's a lot more complicated than just the, the water evaporated and left behind these salts. Therefore, natron was first. I mean, even if you just think about that, if natron's the first one to be left behind and the next one evaporates and it's left behind and the next one evaporates and it's left behind, natron's on the bottom. I mean, this isn't he, he, he's basically taken a factual 
saying about the salt evaporation, excuse me, the uh, salt uh, precipitation. And he's taken this idea and used it to just make shit up. So you, you will never see table salt on the surface. That's the main point I, I wanted to, to show, tell that it cannot be table salt because table, table salt will go, will go down with the water. So if you go to a beach, you will not find table salt. Even if the ocean is full of table salt, you will never find salt patches on the beaches because salt is going with the water, but natron is the first one to leave the water behind. And I know it will come as a huge surprise to you, but that statement is also factually incorrect. You've got places like, I don't know, the Bonneville Salt Flats I just mentioned, or um, what, Los Colorados, I think it's pronounced in uh, Mexico, pink salt, pretty cool, table salt again. And, and then you've also um, got places like with the Dead Sea, I mean, salt, table salt, if it's in the water and the water evaporates, it gets left behind. And, and if it is the, you know, the, the last salt left behind, then it's the one that you're going to see from space if it's big enough. That's just how this works, man. This isn't, this isn't rocket science. It's chemistry. But the, the reason that this frustrates me so much, it's got me going, ah, and stuff like that is because I, again, I'm into geopolymers and the natron theory, if you haven't heard of it, is a very interesting take on geopolymers where they take, talk about using natron to do all kinds of things like etching stones and um, breaking stones down or using it to make water glass and then use, making uh, geopolymers, all kinds of different potential things that could crack the code, could, could help us advance our knowledge into the mysteries. And the people that are top of the list peddling it right now, well, the person uh, Marcel here, he is, um, well, he is catering to people that either don't quite understand all the science involved or are scientifically illiterate enough that he can kind of one, two with the double speak, or people just don't give a shit if they're being lied to. Because the fact of the matter is, the only reason he's bullshitting about all this natron is so that he can say that the ancients had tons. Look, look, natron's fucking everywhere, man. The ancients got out of bed, they threw a rock, and there was natron. And I don't have a problem accepting that the ancients had natron. I mean, it is prevalent enough you can find it. The problem is, is when you feel like you have to bullshit me in order to sell me part of your story and you're ready to do it immediately. I can't trust the videos the guy's made. He makes lots of little videos on Twitter where he's stirring a pot full of dirt and then he freaking gives it a, a, chem, a little uh, zap with his chemical reader or his freaking temperature gauge. And I can't trust anything that he's doing on there because it could all easily be faked. And I know that he's willing to lie to bolster his case, even in areas like this that it really doesn't fucking matter. And so... Yeah, it's offensive because it's frustrating because I like the idea of geopolymers. I think the natron theory may well be onto something. And I think the guy that is top of the heap right now is uh, as far as that theory goes is not only full of shit when it comes to like basic things, but he's just kind of like, <sighs> he's making us all look bad. I guess is the best way of putting it. Basically, he's just willing to bend the facts in order to make his case. And so I can't trust any of the experiments that he shows. I can't trust any of the things. People say, read his book. I I'm not going to be able to trust his book. Every experiment that he does, I'm going to have to replicate. I've seen him on Twitter withholding some of the chemicals that he's using, calling it just a special ingredient. I, you know, I, and the thing is, I don't want to invest my time into his work because as soon as I looked at it, I saw him not just lying a little bit, but completely being just stupidly full of shit. And he doesn't retract. He doesn't ever say that he got something wrong. And so I, I'm not trying to get him to grovel. I don't want him to apologize to me. But this is the kind of thing, though, if, if, his, if he made a mistake with that thing with Natron, which this is not the only mistake he's made. I'm just I'm not trying to make a 40 minute video about this guy. But he made a mistake about the natron thing, and, and, and he was just saying, well, you know, the precipitation thing, ergo, it must be this. If he just made these connected dots on his own, and now he realizes he's wrong, we just come out and say, you're fucking wrong, man. Say, I made a mistake, bing, bang, boom. That's how you, like, keep some credibility. But as it is, he just kind of laughs, and ha, ah, what does Dan know? These guys are idiots. He basically plays off of the hater angle, and he's going to be loving the fact that I'm making a video about the guy, which is, again, I, I'm only doing this because 
I like geopolymers and I find this guy a problem. He is basically, he's the reason that people look at that. One of the biggest reasons that people look at the geopolymer idea, the Natron theory in particular, and say, this is a place where nut jobs go because the guy on top of the heap is so full of shit that the words coming out of his mouth belong in one goes over the cuckoo nest. All right, I've yelled about the guy enough now. Sorry, Um, I do have a video coming soon about the vases. There are things I need clarified in that universe. Getting ready to leave town in a couple of days for my uh, big old fancy investigation into this. Boy, you got a good look at my bald spot there. I might have to cover that in editing. But yeah, oh, Chief Com Comely Skull coming down the pipes here soon. And, um, you know, on uh, December uh, 5th through 7th, I'm going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona for the Quest for the Past conference, and you should totally go check this out. We are going to have Jimmy Corsetti there. We're going to have me there. We're going to have Gary Buchler there. We're going to have um, Mike Collins there. We're going to have, oh, so many other people there. Come on, Hugh Newman. I can name all these people. I can do it. J.J. Ainsworth. And, and we're going to Michael Button. And we're going we're gonna to have, um, we're going to have my boy, uh, I said, I'm not sure. Some people have had to cancel and stuff. But anyway, you should come to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope I didn't show my bald spot again there. Um, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. And keep this in mind, guys. Look. Just because we're all on the alternate history side of things doesn't mean that we all have to agree on everything. It doesn't mean we have to fight about things. But, man, if the grift, if you're lying, if you're full of shit, dude, I, at some point I'm going to say something. I mean, like, if the if the quest for ancient civilizations, if the if the the key to the mystery is my car keys, but use it for a metaphor. I'm in your house. I can't find my keys, and it's time for me to go home. And the truth is the keys are under the sink. Now, if you keep telling me the keys are under the couch, you know, if you haven't looked, obviously, because they ain't, and you keep telling me that they're, that they're under there, at some point, man, I'm just going to be mad at you for wasting my time and lying to me. So uh, I hope that makes sense to some of you. Anyway, have a great evening, and we'll see you soon.